Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. We're going to continue talking about p-values. In the last section, I just defined what a p-value is, uh, which, just to remind you, is the probability of getting a data point or a sample point more extreme than the data that you collected for your hypothesis test. So it's basically going to be in the tails, either the left or the right, more extreme than the data that you've collected. If you haven't watched that last section, you have to do that right now. Now, we did a lot of work in trying to figure out how to find the p-value. Now we're gonna try to show you exactly how to use that to uh, uh, see if a hypothesis test is going to reject or fail to reject uh, that guy. So, let me just write it down. It's not gonna make a lot of sense at first, but I promise you that it will in a few minutes. So, basically, here's how you use a p-value. So I'm gonna write conclusions of the p-test. In other words, uh, we told you at the beginning of the day here, or the beginning of the last couple of lessons, that the p-value is still going to be used to tell you when you reject a hypothesis or fail to reject a hypothesis. It's doing the same job that we did before in a slightly different way. All right. So we have a criteria here to tell you when you reject an all-hypothesis and when you don't. And they're very, very simple. If the p-value, which we call p, is less than or equal to alpha, this is the level of significance that we have in every one of these hypothesis tests, then you reject the null hypothesis. Very simple. If the p-value that you get is less than or equal to the level of significance alpha, then you reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than alpha, it has to be greater, if this is less than or equal, the only other choice is that it would be greater, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis. So this is basically the most important thing we're going to say in this lesson. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, when I first read this, when I said, well, if P is less than this, we reject it. And if P is greater than this, then we fail to reject it. When I first read that, maybe the first 10 times that I read that, I did not understand intuitively why this would lead to rejecting the null hypothesis, and this would lead to failing to reject the null hypothesis. And your book, most cases, are not going to explain it to you. They're just going to say, this is what a p-value is, and this is what it basically, it's the probability of getting something more extreme than your sample data, okay? And then they're going to tell you, well, if the p-value is less than, than the uh, alpha, then you reject it, and if it's greater, you fail to reject it. Now, you could just blindly follow that. I mean, I could give you a problem right now. I could say, here's the null hypothesis, here's the research or alternate hypothesis, here's your level of significance alpha, and then here's your data. You can calculate a p-value. We've done it in the last couple of sections here. And then from that p-value, all you do is you compare it to the value of alpha, 